Let's take a moment here and listen to this silence. Welcome to the Oregon Outback. Welcome to the Lost Forest of Oregon, a location that is many, many miles from just about anywhere in the state. It took about two and a half hours to get here from Lapine, but what I get in return is absolute silence. It's just so unbelievable at how quiet it is out here. And this spot was representative. I chose this spot to represent a multi-part series that I'm starting on the Oregon Outback, an area that I don't think is understood very well. It's actually kind of hidden on the back burner in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it's high desert. You don't think of it in the Pacific Northwest. You think Oregon, hey, all green waterfalls, cool, all rainforest. But this is the reality of two thirds of Oregon. Absolute dry, dry, dry glorious high desert. So on this multi-part series, we're gonna do a lot of really cool stops along the way, check out the geology, the history, all kinds of things you can see on the Oregon Outback. And it's something, it's a project I've been meaning to do for a long time, I hope you guys enjoy. What makes the Oregon Outback so unique is its location within the Great Basin. This is a huge hydrographic area that covers almost 210,000 square miles of the western United States, including southeastern Oregon. It's pretty simple, really. All precipitation in the region evaporates, meaning water can flow into the Great Basin, but it can only leave by evaporation. No rivers find outlets in the Great Basin. But that's not all of it. The Great Basin isn't defined as easily as the Cascades or the Rockies. There's something permeating about it. Something that goes beyond description. It's not really a basin either. It's a continuous bunch of basins separated by mountain ranges. Basins with no outlets. Author Stephen Trimble, he was the one who described the basin the best as an ocean of sagebrush interrupted by islands and mountains. And what about me? I grew up wandering sagebrush, visiting old ghost towns, mountain views, and fishing for trout in the desert. This is my home. There's something about this place, something about the sagebrush ocean. I just understand it. and it goes way beyond what looks like lifeless expanses. The silence, the solitude, all of it is amplified. It's a place where you can recollect, rejuvenate, and resupply. The 
The Lost Forest is a five square mile stand of ponderosa pine, displaced and separated by 40 miles of arid desert. It's thought that the Lost Forest stand is a remnant of a much larger forest thousands of years ago. The Lost Forest Pines survive on only 9 inches of rain a year. That's over half of their normal needs. The trees utilize an ancient root system beneath layers of ash and pumice soil, where they remain self-sustaining to this day. So here's proof of the discovery that you can find out here. And this is just like a few seconds after I stopped recording. Check this out. Those are elk tracks. You can tell because the print is about four and a half inches. And he just kind of wanders into the forest like that. And it's right next to my print right there. It's just amazing. You just don't think life is out here, but it's out here in full form. It just being out here in the outback, it just makes you feel so small. Just absolutely beautiful. The desert, the dry and sun-lashed desert, is a good school in which to observe the cleverness and the infinite variety of techniques of survival under pitiless opposition. Life could not change the sun or water the desert, so it changed itself. The desert has mothered magic things. John Steinbeck 1962. When you drive in the Oregon Outback, you start to stutter. You can give me all the mountains and the oceans in the world, but nothing is ever gonna steal my heart as much as the high desert. Oh my God, look at how beautiful that is. Crack in the ground is at the very northern edge of Christmas Valley, 
formed from Green Mountain and cooling lava flows at least 12,000 years ago. Normally fissures like these are filled in with soil and rock by erosion. It's the region's dry conditions that preserve the fissure, leaving a giant gash in the ground nearly 50 feet deep. It can be up to 20 degrees colder inside the crack, and many settlers used it as a refrigerator, and even harvested ice during the winter. Never gonna get over how unbelievably quiet it is out here in the outback. It's just so freaking amazing. This is incredible. Wow. Many great minds from the likes of Wallace Stegner, Mark Twain, Mary Austin, and even Edward Abbey have all tried to understand the Great Basin. It's a place that can't be explained or understood. You have to understand it through feeling and experience. This is a place that calls you. This is a place that grows on you. And this is a place that sucks you in and never ever lets you go. It is the sagebrush ocean and I'm happily sailing it.